Hey everybody, it's Matthew here. Welcome back to another video on my channel today. Today in this episode, guys, I'm going to give you my top 10 movie hot takes, as a matter of fact. Um, so yeah, um, I thought about doing this video um, for a while now, actually, as a matter of fact. Like, um, like, um, like, like, um, like, so yeah, I, I really do, um, I kind of have been wanting to share some of my top eight, um, 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 hot takes for movies went on the channel. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while now. So I thought, um, so I thought it might be a good idea for me to share my hot takes. Sorry guys, I'm trying to clear some notifications. There's just a bunch of rubbish that keeps coming up. But yeah, um, so yeah, I'm going to be giving you guys my top 10 movie hot takes today here on this video as a matter of fact so yeah let me know down in the comment section guys um what what are your hot takes in the comment section down below um and with that said guys be sure you like comment and subscribe and share this video with your friends because that would really help on my channel greatly and also guys those of you guys that are new to the channel i do more than just um movies and physical media related content I also do um, Lego related stuff, I play video games, all sorts of stuff like that guys. So if that kind of stuff is your speed to watch on YouTube guys, please make sure you go watch all my other videos, give a couple of my other videos a chance guys, and if you do end up liking this channel guys, please do give this video a big huge thumbs up, leave a like and a comment. And those of you guys that are not new to the channel, and if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you go subscribe after this video guys, but that ain't ever do guys. Enjoy the video. Let's get started. So at the number 10 spot, um, this may take a couple of seconds to fully understand, but, um, but, um, at number 10, I have to say that, um, but, um, half of the time I agree with people that comedy sequels aren't very good. Um, so when I say half of the time, because... A lot of the times people say cons people say all the time comedy sequels are never good. Like um like lots of people say they can they only they um um they should have sticked with one single comedy movie and just left it at that. And I hear a lot of people say constantly that comedy sequels are not very good as a matter of fact. Like like um the comedy sequels that that I really liked um were um um were um were um was the second Dumb and Dumber and the second Ted. Like I enjoyed the both of those just as much as the first one. I wouldn't say they're better than the first one exactly, but I did I did get the same amount of enjoyment out of both of them. Like um like I did um with um with with the first two, with the first ones of those and then i hear constantly that people say the hangover um part 2 and part 3 aren't very good either but i can i don't have a say on that cuz i've only i only watched the first hangover and then um the second horrible bosses and the second neighbors i've always been really mixed on those that's why i don't really own them in my collection but then, um, but then, here's where I agree. I agree that Zoolander 2 and The Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues, both of those movies were not good. Like, I can relate on the both of those. But if we're talking about Dumb and Dumber and Ted 2, both of those sequels I actually enjoy just as much as the first one. But, but yeah, they're... So yeah, I kind of go back and forth with liking comedy sequels. Like, like um, there's a like there's some comedy sequels that that I got um, the same amount of enjoyment out of, just like in the first movie. And there's ones that I'm mixed on, and there's ones I 100% agree with everybody on that are not good, as a matter of fact. But overall. Yeah, there are some comedy sequels that I like and don't like, and so that's why I say I agree with half of the time, because a lot of people say comedy sequels are never good, and I agree with that half of the time, and disagree with that the other half of the time, as a matter of fact. But 
But moving in at the number nine spot, um, I actually think um, all four of the Tim Burton Batman movies are just as good. So now, um, a lot of people say that the first Tim, ba Tim Burton Batman movie, the one with Michael Keaton as Batman, and then um, Jack Nicholson as the Joker, that those are like amazing performances out of the Batman movie. But then I, he I also hear a lot of people, um, I also hear a lot of people say that Batman Returns is really good because you got um, Michael Keaton back as Batman, and then you got um, Danny DeVito as the Penguin and Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. And yeah, I think both of those Batman movies are are really good. But then I hear Batman Forever um, always gets mixed reviews. And the reason why I really like it so much is because you have Jim Carrey as the Riddler. And I think he was a great... Oh, sorry guys, I hit my, I hit my camera there. I thought um, Jim Carrey did a great performance as the Riddler. Same thing with Tommy Lee Jones' Two-Face. I really enjoyed that movie just as much as the first two. But then, here's here's where it gets hard, hotter. You get into Batman and Robin. And um, I really like Batman and Robin. Like, I hear a lot of people... This is another one that I hear people say constantly. This is one of the worst superhero movies ever made. And... Every time I I haven't rewatched these um, for a while, but I do want to rewatch all four of these eventually. Because the first time I watched all four of these is when I was on um, Christmas break one year, and I binged through all four of them on Christmas break, and I really enjoy all four of these. Like I even have them all four. I even have all four movies in a Blu-ray unpack um, in my movie collection as a matter of fact but but yeah overall I think all f all four of these movies are really good the same case scenario with all four of the Tim Burton Batman movies is going to be the same case scenario at, as my number eight spot and at my number eight spot I have to I have to say I think all three of the Taken movies are just as good. Yes, I'm giving I'm giving that face. Why? Because they are not all the same. They have a different concept each time. Like um like um like yeah, I really do I really do like the Taken movies. Like you guys know that I that I like Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson is one of my guys. And all three of those movies are just as good. Like his daughter gets taken in the first one and he has to go get her back. Um some bad um um some bad guys go after him because he killed his leader in the first one. That was the whole concept of the second one. And then you get into the third one, which, well, which is probably the worst one in my opinion. But I still think it's just as good as all three of these movies, to tell you the truth. And and yeah, I really do think all of these movies are um are really good. As a matter of fact, because I I actually heard a lot of negative opinions about um, Taken 2 and Taken 3. Like, a lot of people have said it's the same concept, but they, cha they change who gets taken. And they don't... And, and, I'm, and as I watched the first one and then the second one, and then when I got to the third one, I'm all like, these movies all have different concepts. Why? Why, why, why? Are people saying that it has the same concept? And that's just wrong that people say this because it doesn't have the same concept every time. They each have a little different. I get it. 
In every movie, somebody gets taken. But, but nonetheless, that's not the main concept of the second and third movie. The second and third movie, they all, both of them had a completely different concept away from who gets taken. And so, yeah, that is my eighth hot take. And I don't know why people are saying that, that the second and third one are rehashes, as a matter of fact. Um, coming in at um, um, coming in at number seven is going to be, I think Madam Web is a is um is a good movie. So now, in case you guys have not heard, this was a movie um that that recently came out. Like I I heard a lot of people really hated this movie, but. To tell you the truth, I really did, I really enjoyed this movie as well. Like, I'm not like a gigantic Spider-Man fan. I enjoyed the all three movies that Tobey Maguire did and all three of the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. And then I liked the first Amazing Spider-Man. And then the first Spider-Verse movie I liked, but the sequels to the both of those I didn't really care about. I know that's a hot take because I that's another big hot take I have because I don't care for Spider-Man and across the Spider-Verse and I Yeah, but but yeah, I really do think I liked it. Like I did not have high expectations for this movie at all going into it. And that and because the last two Spider-Man spin-off movies with the villains that they did were not very good. Like, I, like, in my opinion, Venom is the worst supervillain, but I did end up watching the first Venom, and I actually really liked it a lot. Tom Hardy did a great job as Venom, but then I actually had a lot of fun with the first Venom, and I thought the first Venom was really funny, but then we had Venom Let There Be Carnage, and that movie was crap. I will say right from the get-go that that movie is crap. Like, it just felt like a rehash of the first Venom. And then, it just felt like a rehash of the first Venom, but except for they brought in Carnage to, like, make the movie more violent. And it, and they literally, like, they took the, the same concept from the first one and tried to, and tried to make it better, as a matter of fact. And then... We get into Morbius, which I've heard a lot of people didn't um, actually really hated, and that I 100% agree on. But um, but then the latest Spider-Man spinoff movie for a Spider-Man villain, we have Madam Web. And to tell you the truth, this movie was, was actually um, pretty great, in my opinion. And um, I actually thought that this was a good, heartwarming story about about this anti-hero um, that that tries to be the hero because she because she could see the future and she tries to save those um, three young girls that are like high school and whatnot. But but yeah, pretty much I actually think Madame Web it is one of the better Spider-Man movies in my opinion, or at least connected to the Spider-Man universe. But yeah, I, th I thought that this movie was just as good as the first Venom. The, 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 other, the other two Spider-Man villain spinoff movies, I don't really care about at all. And I will never understand why people really, um, really don't like Madame Web at all as a matter of fact so coming in um so so coming in at number six now um this um um this may be a little bit of a confusion but i actually think um thor love and thunder 
is um it, I'm not Thor Love and Thunder. I think Thor Ragnarok is one of the worst Marvel MCU movies and all the other Thor and all of the other Thor movies are top 20 Marvel MCU movies. And I say that. So yeah, I know a lot of people really love Thor Ragnarok. But um I get it. It has it has some funny parts to it, but my issue with excuse me, my issue with Thor Love and Thunder though keep saying Thor Love and Thunder. My issue with Thor Ragnarok is that it doesn't it doesn't really tell you anything. Like um like it gives you more questions than um than answers in my opinion. Like an example would be um, Hulk doesn't remember Thor um, because um, because he was underground for two years. But then... But then they don't tell you why he's underground for two years. And um, the reason why... The reason why I don't like it that, it that this movie gives you a lot of questions is what a Marvel movie is supposed to do is to answer questions for you and then they set up and then they and then they give you a couple of questions through the post credit scene and towards the end of the movie to set up for the next Marvel movie and what's to come. So yeah. That's um that's my take on Thor Ragnarok and what I saw it from my view, but I love the first Thor and an even bigger of a hot take that um that that I have um, with these movies is that I think um, Thor The Dark World and um, Thor Love and Thunder are top five MCU movies. So if you guys have followed me for any determined amount of time, you guys know that I'm a big Thor fan, I'm a big Captain America fan, and those are my guys when it comes to Marvel. And and yeah, I I like the both of those guys, and I I I keep hearing negative things about Thor: Love and Thunder, and I hear the same negative things with Thor: The Dark World, and all three of these movies, and and those two movies are great in my opinion. The first one's great too, but Ragnarok. I just I just have a completely different take on it and and for me that's what makes it a hot take for me as a matter of fact is that is that yeah I just think I just don't care for Thor Ragnarok and I love the other Thor movies as a matter of fact but reaching the top 5 we're reaching to the big hot spicy big daddies and um at um at number five, I think that um, Monsters vs. Aliens is, um, is the best DreamWorks animation movie. So I hear, all, I hear constantly and constantly and constantly that that people are always mixed on monsters versus aliens like this is like this is one of those this is like one of those um this is one of those dreamworks animation movies either they love it or they hate it like um like i grew up with a lot of dreamworks animation movies like um like i got scared by Insectosaurus when I was younger with Monsters vs. Aliens. But then when we get into um, Shrek and Madagascar, I love those just as much as Monsters vs. Aliens. But I love Monsters vs. Aliens so much because it's got my girl Reese Witherspoon in it. And this is another DreamWorks animation movie that I don't understand why why people why people put it toward white people almost put it in the top 10 worst DreamWorks animation movies as a matter of fact but but yeah I technically 
enjoy this movie like I do with a lot of other DreamWorks movies. And just in my opinion, it's um it's the best. It's it's literally the best DreamWorks movie, and that's just my opinion. But now these but now these opinions are gonna get even hotter. So um, at number four, I have to say, Seed of Chucky is the second best Chucky movie. So back in Halloween, if you guys back when it was Halloween time in 2023, you guys may have noticed that um, when I ranked all of the Chucky movies, you guys all know. You guys should probably. You guys might remember my top three. I said. The third best Chucky movie was the very first Child's Play, and then Seed of Chucky was the second best one, and then Bride of Chucky was the best Chucky movie. And um, this is another this is another hot take that I have that I don't want to be on this list. Unlike all three of the Taken movies and Monsters vs. Aliens. Um, people saying it's almost a top 10 worst DreamWorks animation movie. And yeah. I So yeah, this is another one where, where I don't get why people hate it so much. Like with, now like with, um, with the, with Bride of Chucky. At the end, we see t we see the we see Tiffany giving birth to um to a baby boy that's a doll, and um and the second one literally picks up where we left off because we get introduced to Glenn's son, we get introduced to Glenn in the movie, Chucky's son, as a matter of fact, and. I love this. I I love Seed of Chucky. Bride of Chucky is actually my favorite, and I really do think um, Seed of Chucky is um is um is probably the second best out of all out of all the Chucky movies, and I do think it's a great follow up to Bride of Chucky, as a matter of fact. Coming in at number three, um, this this one is probably gonna be is probably gonna turn out to be really controversial, and that is is that I think um, Scream Four is the worst Scream movie in the franchise. So now, a lot of you long term Scream fans say that Scream Three is the worst and um, I I disagree that it's the worst Scream movie but I will say it's definitely the weak link of the franchise but then we get into Scream 4 and I am not a fan of um, of Scream 4 like I know a lot of you hardcore Scream fans and a lot of you long-term Scream fans really um really always have like different opinions about this movie but my thing, my issue with with this one is that Jill Roberts, she should have never been revealed as a ghost face at all. She should have never have been have have been revealed as ghost face, and um, there was a bunch of clue, and there was no evidence or clues. That would that would make me think that Jill Roberts. Oh yeah, there there's no doubt in my mind that Jill Roberts is going to be revealed as one of the ghost face at the very end of the movie, and um, and yeah, she 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 was she acted like a spoiled little brat at the end of the at the end of the movie, and Jill Roberts looked like a really nice person. As a, she looked like a really nice person as a character. She did not look sus at all to me. And then big shock, she comes out of the clo she comes out of the closet. 
She takes the mask off and she's revealed as the ghost face. And in my opinion, she should have never have been the ghost face. And almost her having given away with it, that's just crap. And then and then um she doesn't like that Sydney that Sydney is so famous and she has the Hall of Fame. And um and then she's and then she it's like she goes from a nice average person to a spoiled little brat that just says, Sydney, 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 Sydney. F you. Like she wants to kill her. It just doesn't I just don't get how she was revealed how why would it make any sense that she's the killer? It makes absolutely no sense in my opinion. Why was she revealed as the ghost face? And then um, same thing with Charlie. Like, I didn't think he really had a motive to be revealed as the ghost face at all. Like, um, like what I've been experiencing preview, um, recently with the screen movies is whenever there's two ghost faces revealed, like to me, there's a purpose on why one of the ghost faces is the killer, but then the other ghost face doesn't have a purpose on, on, on why that person is the other ghost face. Like, um, like, um, like to me, they just make one ghost face have a purpose and then they just pick another random character to be the ghost face and that's um that's kind of how I felt about Charlie and Jill would probably be the most sense to have a purpose to be to be revealed as the ghost face and a motive as well but again she should have just never been the killer in my opinion and yes I do think Scream 4 is the worst screen movie in the entire franchise. And um, I probably will rewatch it just to see if my opinion changes on it. But we will see as a matter of fact. But, but yeah, that is my third hot take for the video. Coming in at number, at number two, my runner-up is going to be, I thought the original Justice League was better than Zack Snyder's Justice League. And, yeah. That's a, that was another hot take that, um, that I had, um, with, um, this was a this is another one of my massive hot takes that I have. And let me explain. So in the DCEU to tell you the truth, I think I think that that Zack Snyder's Justice League it's the worst movie in the DCEU. Yes, I don't want to say it that much, but yeah. I did not want to say it at, at all. But yes, I do think the, orig the original Justice League Some, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm blanking out because I feel bad for saying some of these things. But in my opinion, the original Justice League is the, um, is the work is, is better than Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I will explain because... Jack Snyder's Justice League is is um is really long. Like it's like he remade it's like he remade the original Justice League to try to make it longer and better. And a lot of people actually said it um it was better than the original Justice League.
um, as um, as a matter of fact. And I don't know why. I don't even know why people even hated the original Justice League in the first place. Was it because they should have brought Superman back from the dead? Is that why? Nonetheless, I don't know. But this is my second... This And this is my second hottest take ever. But I was sorry about the background noise, guys. My, my dad... Um, my dad needed something, and so and so I was just telling him I'll be out. I was just giving him a sign that I would be out there, that I would come back out in a little bit. As a matter of fact, so yeah, I apologize for the background noise. As a matter of fact, but but yeah, um, moving moving along from that and putting that behind us now, it's time for my hottest take. Ever. <sighs> you guys are gonna hate me. You guys are gonna hate me. Terrifier 2 is the worst movie ever created and of all time. There, I said it. Okay, so yes. This is a massive hot take for you horror fanatics. And I watched Terrifier 2, as a matter of fact, and I hated this movie. This movie is dog crap. It is freaking hideous. Every time I watch it and think about it, it's just garbage. This is this movie is nothing but a trash show. This is a dumpster fire. This is a dumpster fire of a movie. And with um and with this movie, a lot of people said they they love it because it because it throws back that um because a lot of people said it throws back that eighties. Um, slasher vibe from Friday the 13th and Halloween and I'm and when and when somebody was reviewing reviewing Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey they were comparing it to Terrifier 2 in some way and lots of people said yeah this is one of the greatest horror movies ever made and one of the best slasher movies of all time and I'm sitting here going, no, it's not. And everybody that I've heard, the everybody that I've seen review this movie, they were all like, oh, you guys got to watch Terrifier 2. It's a bloody brilliant horror movie. It's a, it's a great endless gore fest. Like, you'll love it to death and you won't regret watching it because it is good. It's got a nice, compelling story. And you'll love this movie, and it will change your opinion on every horror movie. No, it didn't. Halloween, Scream, Friday the 13th, all those movies, even the first ones of all those movies, are better than Terrifier 2. Like, um,. Like, um, but yeah, enough of me bashing on that movie like I was just doing. But the main reason on why I don't like this movie, guys, is because this is, this is the movie on what causes me to, to have, um, 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 to make horror movies look like they're a bad image for me. And this movie is not very good. Um, in, um, in my opinion. And this is the worst movie I've ever seen in my life because it causes delusions for me and it causes me to have nightmares. And it, this movie really makes horror movies look like it's a bad image for me. 
in this movie is just completely horrifying to me. And yeah, I just don't care to ever watch this movie again. Like, lots of people say that the the that one of the greatest kills of all time in horror history is is when they kill Allie. And I'm saying, no! That Arthur Clown is just sitting there scalping her. What? What is so thrilling about that? Michael Myers, Ghostface, Jason Voorhees, every other killer that I can think of does not sit there and scalp somebody until they're wounded and also covered in blood. And yeah, people say, this is a work of art. This is one of the best horror movies ever created and ever have been produced. This, this is a work of art. You guys got it wrong. I'm sorry, you got it wrong. This is the worst movie. I think this is the worst movie of all time. And this is the worst movie ever been created and produced. This movie is a dumpster fire in my opinion. And don't ever ask me if I'll watch this movie again. Because I won't. Because, it, because it's hideous. It makes horror movies look like they're a bad image for me. And I know they're not. They're only a bad image for me because of this movie. And that is my biggest hot take ever in film history. All right, guys, I'm done bashing on it. That is it for this video, as a matter of fact, guys. And, um, and yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if these, um, if, if these hot takes really got you all worked up as a matter of fact, but yes, it is true. I really don't like Terrifier 2. I really do think it's a piece of trash, as a matter of fact. It, I do think it's a dumpster fire. I really do think it's a dud of a horror movie, too. I didn't really enjoy it, as a matter of fact, but this is one that I try not to talk about, but since we are talking about hot takes, I thought, eh, why not just throw it in there as my number one, because everybody loves it, as a matter of fact. But but so yeah, guys, um, that is going to do it um, for this episode. As a matter of fact, be sure to share your top 10 hot takes down below in the comment section, as a matter of fact, guys. But without any further ado, guys, be sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with your friends, because that really help on my channel greatly. And also, guys, those of you guys that are new to the channel, I do more than just movies and physical media related content. I also do Lego related stuff, I play video games, all sorts of stuff like that guys. So if that kind of stuff is your speed to watch on YouTube guys, please make sure you go watch a couple of my other videos, give a couple of my other videos a chance guys, and if you do end up liking this channel guys, please um, please make sure you consider hitting that red subscribe button, but most importantly press that notification bell so you don't miss anything in the future, and give this video a big huge thumbs up. But those of you guys that are not new to the channel, if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you go subscribe after this video, guys. But that ain't the redo, guys. I'm going to go get ready back to more videos, because more videos are on the way sooner rather than later, as a matter of fact. And with that said, though, guys, take care, drink water, and stay safe. And I will see you all in the very next video. Bye.